Yo, it is another edition of the IOPS podcast. I was trying to think of what a 500 yo feels like, just a bland little yo, because that's what we do. Like above, below, below, at, down, at, down, at, above, at, above uh, and we're back and we split you wanted to split this is on you pal yeah and uh, up to one i'm ready i'm like yes no no way another sunday they're gonna do this to us i i texted jack at, when it was like seven two at one point i'm like i'm like the the winning percentage on high hopes recording sundays has to be like below 300 over the years like they are just horrible on sundays for us how you doing buddy nice to see you by the way Shout out to Miller Light. You know, last uh, pod, you you were like, yes, there you go. That See, but there's a difference in the Miller Lights because you need them in both situations. The the fun win, win a series Miller Light and a summer day, which is beautiful. And then the, oh, the Phillies just lost nine to two. I definitely need some Miller Lights. Either way, it works. Miller Light, of course, the sponsor of High Hopes and the sponsor, uh, official sponsor of the Philadelphia Phillies. Tastes like Miller time, Philadelphia. Celebrate responsibly. And, of course, we love Miller Lite. We're going to have some Miller Lite announcements, related announcements coming up in the near future. I can definitely say that uh, our first High Hopes watch party at a at a bar somewhere near at least some of you and, and, and near uh, generally all of us around here uh, will be able to announce that in the very near future. So, Fun stuff coming up, obviously, uh, like always with the Miller Lite. Um, Miller Lite, a lot more fun than than baseball today. Zach Wheeler, uh, it, like, and God, was he was he looking nasty? He was just cruising and just one pitch. And I almost said when we did our, uh, you know, who's going to kill us? And O'Neill Cruz did Homer, by the way. Cabrian Hayes did have a, a you know RBI double at one point, but I almost said Sawinski, and I was like, nah, I'm not going to say, so. yeah. Um, that was a frustrating one today. Yesterday, a great one. The cast, the walk off, you know, uh, uh, how you doing, pal? Nice to see you. I'm okay. Like, I I'm know. just, I know I, that's, that's where it's at. I guess. Like, I'm just, I'm fine. They split. They're still 500. They're playing like it too. Like they're playing about as 500 as a baseball team could, mm-hmm. um, which is frustrating for, for a team that that came this close to winning the World Series two years ago, and like this close to or this close to being in it last year, and this close to winning it, yeah, yeah. Well, I, and here's what I don't want them to do: is I don't want them resting on their laurels, saying, "Well, eh, when it gets to June, we'll turn it on and figure it out," because they're just playing so dumb, and, reckless, and and, care- and careless. Yep. Like, just it, the little things add up. I mean, the bone error to start that inning. JT throwing through on a first and third situation. Brandon Marsh. In Brandon- a one in a one run game with a runner on third. Like, what are you thinking there? And it's almost like he, he threw, as he was, I think he threw it poorly because I think in the moment he's like, crap, I probably shouldn't be doing this. But go well, ahead. And it could have been. It also could have been, and I'm trying to remember it in my head, like I, I, I believe Stott should be in front of the bag looking to, to make a throw home. Mm-hmm. So maybe Stott was in the wrong position too. It's just, it's so, like I, again, we, I think we've talked about this a lot on this podcast. Like I can handle losing. It, it's just when it's bad, like bad baseball and dumb baseball and like almost just the whole idea of, ah, eh, like eh, it's early. We'll, we'll, we'll get him in June. It's, and and to their credit, the last couple of years they've done this nonsense to start the season, and then they they write the ship and they and they figure it out. And they don't play as dumb baseball, but like they are an older team. They are professionals. It's not like they're a bunch of kids out there. Like I don't expect the Pirates to be doing this. Speaking of the mm-hmm. Pirates, Brian Reynolds is infuriating, dude. I hate him. He's so annoying. <laughs> like I just so felt annoying. like he was. I felt like he was going to get a hit every single time he was yeah. up. He made a million catches in the field. It, it's it's. Uh, and I know we won the game, but that that kid, uh, Jared Jones, is like disgusting, yeah. disgusting, dude. That kid is nasty. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So, so I'm just, I'm just kind of, I'm not, I'm like just kind of eh with the team right now. It's, it's how I've been for a little bit. The, the pitching staff's still really good. It's weird to see Wheeler like get hit around a little bit. I'm not used to that. You know, he had the, he was because he was dominant, dude. Ten strikeouts, splitters looking great. 
feel like he's got a good rhythm with finding his, his off speed. And he made a bad pitch to Jack Swinski, but also boom in an air to start that inning. So and also not- it barely got out. Like it, it was like a, a squeaker, a homer as you're gonna get too. Yeah. yeah. So so you have that. The the, the pitching staff is, is really really good, and the offense is just. I, I, it's 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 an annoying watch almost every single night. Like even when they win, it's like you should have. I mean, I, I'm not expecting you to score every single time there's a guy in scoring position, but they can just never break through. And it and it feels like when they're all when when a couple guys are cold, they all go cold. Like it's like Turner's hitting very well right now. Schwarber Turner's been save. awesome, and Schwarber, yep, exactly. That's exactly what I was gonna say. And but, March obviously has been good all year. And that's I it. mean, Bryce has had two hits in the week. Two, it's yeah. the week, I and mean, he didn't get a hit in the St. Louis series. He got two this time. He had a couple that I thought were going to be gone, but they mm-hmm. they weren't. He just missed them. Like the run's coming for Bryce. JT's cold off. Boom. I mean, when he gets into this rhythm of just drilling the baseball into the ground and and just every it's a double play. Like I I, I know they haven't grounded into the most double plays in baseball. They are third. But I would love to to watch a team that grounds to, to more double plays than this team. It's just they're annoying. They are they are incredibly annoying. I keep waiting for the flip to switch here or switch to flip, whatever. Flip the switch, whatever. I don't care. You're right they, the first time, right? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, sw- uh, yeah. Flip the switch, no. Flip the switch. Yeah, yeah. Flip the. You're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have me doubting it. Yeah, you're. Right. No, it's flip the switch because yeah, yeah, I get in my own head with that. You're, I know. Well, because you don't normally nail it. Now you've, yeah. you've, you're on it. Yeah, so but it's really been the story of this offense for the last couple of years. It's it's just that when it's mattered the most outside of game six and seven, <laughs> they they have largely been a pretty good offense. It's mm-hmm. just it feels like they go through this in the regular season a couple of times and it's annoying that it's at the beginning of the year versus winnable teams. I know the Pirates are eleven and five or whatever, but they're they're not that good. I, I mean they have some decent players, they have some young players, they have some good pitchers, but they're just they're the Pirates. You look at the mm-hmm. lineup. Look at the lineup. I mean it's 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 nothing. No, I'm I uh, preach, buddy. Uh, you know, we that's why we talked about them getting off to a hot starter and you know, like the Braves come back and win today against the Marlins. And it's just of like the, the Braves of course lose Strider did. officially done for the year. You know, we thought it was going to happen. It's, it's official over the weekend quietly on, on Twitter. They just released the news. It's going to, that he, that he got his surgery or whatever. But um, you know, it's like, but the Braves just keep mashing. They got like, they're, they like, look up the team leaders in uh, OPS uh, so far this season. Guess who it is? It's the Braves, you know, because they just go out and match. They got like an 880 OPS last I looked, and, and all they did is put up nine today. So, um, you know, it's 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 frustrating because, like, you can't let the Braves build a lead on you. And, and they need it, especially like we talked about with what the schedule is like. I mean, it's cake. I mean, they got the Rockies coming up. They got the White Sox there. I mean, this is like. Should be a five and one week. Like, get on a roll here. And and the that's what's so frustrating is you're also, it's, I don't think you're, it's not like you're wasting the great pitching because I think the pitching is going to be pretty great all year. Obviously they're going to be, you know, like every year there'll be some, some stretches for certain pitchers and whatnot, but I think you're going to get great pitching this year, but you are wasting great pitching, you know, at the same time. And, and these guys, it's just incredibly frustrating. And that's the, I think, you know, the, obviously there's a lot that's frustrating, but, but the biggest thing for me is absolutely the super baseball. I, I think it's inarguable to say it's anything else because they should know better. And you can't, it's one thing to, you know, talk about coming in and, and starting hot and how important it is to you as, as a team to, we know we want to win the division this year and we got to come in and not do that. And look, it's one thing if your bats aren't there yet. Like it seemed like in spring training, the the dreaded flu, the whole thing, it seemed like they were behind. I mean, look, you know, I don't pay attention to spring training chats, uh-uh. but, they didn't, but they didn't hit. No not one you. hit in spring training. No one hit in spring training, you know? So they, they've carried that over. Like I can understand the bats being uh, cold and and timing off, and them have to get in rhythm, especially some of these guys who are really you know rhythm hitters get in that that you know groove and be and streaky as a result. But but the thing I can't excuse is when you're losing games because you're you're you know getting picked off first base on a fly ball to center field, or you're you know Christopher Sanchez making two errors when like you you otherwise could have it would have been a great outing, a great outing from that guy, and instead it's like. Okay, like too too much of that, man. Like that's 
that's what's frustrating. And that's where even if, you know, the, the Braves will take a hit from losing Strider and whatever, but we know they have organizational depth. They'll, they'll, they're going to win in the, in the nineties. And if the Phillies lose the, the, the division by a game or two, we're going to be able to look back at some of these boneheaded mistakes that they should not be making. Like, again, I can excuse cold bats. I can excuse a, a tired arm or a not ready arm to start the season. I can't excuse losing games in any way, shape or form because of, of, of correctable mistakes that, you know, one or two is fine. We've just seen a, a like, it's like every game there's, there's multiple. Gen- yeah. Well, and the thing is, you know, when it was back in the day when you had Schwarber and left or you had, guys in the field that just shouldn't be Hoskins or whatever. Yeah. He kind of excused it away. Like Marsh is a plus defender in, in left field. JT is a plus defender behind the plate, but there's also been, a, and listen, he, he took a ball off the wrist on Friday. I know. That's what I was thinking with the bat today where I was like, I'm not, I'm going to give him a little chance to get back. I mean, the toughest Philly we've seen in a while. I think it's I said that last pod and it's, it's just like ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. He's all, he, and, and he's yeah. great. Yeah. It's just, it's just, there's been a weird amount of pass balls. Even Stubby had one yesterday. And, and he's also really been down on throwing runners out. I mean, the numbers are crazy. He's yeah. one of the league leaders in terms of getting uh, against teams converting stolen base against him, which is, well, you know, we got to fix that. <laughs> yeah, we, we can't let that right? continue. Yeah, we can't no, let that continue no. at all. But yeah, yeah it's just, it, it's, just, it's almost like, and I, I think the best way to explain it, James, and, Maybe this is a silver lining. I'm not sure if it's a silver lining. You can let me know if it's it's a silver mm-hmm, lining. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe they are just such a vibes team that like <laughs> because that's what it seems like. It's like when when they're hitting, when they're hitting, their feelings good. When they're yeah. not hitting, their feelings also horrible. So they seem like such a team that when they can they can get in a rhythm and get in a roll, like everything just picks up. It's just annoying that it takes until June for that to happen. And it feels like it, it, it happens every single year. Mm-hmm. And the annoying part about the beginning of this year is that this is a schedule. There's missed they opportunities. Play. Yeah. Now they are two games over 500 in the, uh, uh, in, in the month. Well, <laughs> in, in the month so far. and look, they also do still have a, you know, a half a month of, of a easy schedule left. If they rail off a, a 10 and two or a nine and three, or, or even an eight and four to finish the month, we're like, all right. Four like games they, up at the end, five games up at the end. Like, hell yeah, you know? If they can just get going. A li- and, and I think you're starting to see signs of it, at least offensively. Like, Well, certainly with certain guys. I mean, Trey, you know, Rojas has been much better the last week. But, I mean, Trey's the one. Four, I hey, mean, hey, hey, hey. Rojas sitting over 400 in his last seven dude, games. Trey, and like Trey, it's like the uh, Trey, it, it, like the outs are, are smoked. I mean, Trey looks totally locked in. Schwarber. Looks really good. I mean, he's t- t- fighting the early season struggles by by changing the approach a little bit. And and you, I mean, I'm sure everyone saw the stat, but I mean, five times got on base five times against a left hander. The first left handed Philly to do that since freaking Richie Ashburn in '58, Jack. So yeah, who's a better our, player? Our he's leadoff hitter, man. Yeah, right. But uh, so like, yeah, I I think that there there are signs, and obviously Marsh has been great. Stott had that, you know, crushed that homer the other night. Like, I think he's starting to add the single late. You know, I think he's starting to be a little more comfortable at the plate. But you know, it's Bryce. It's that when Bryce is going cold like that, and oh, to his credit, just drags the team. Dude, it does his whole thing because he's so mad, and he's like, he's probably, you probably don't want to bug him. You know, you try the vibe to the vibes thing. I will say to his credit, like the the one guy who has not had any d- defense. I mean, he has been a like an all time great first baseman well, so far this season. So like, what am I watching? It was the it was the eighth inning when he made the diving play, I believe. Yeah, and then so. His play. Do you remember the remember the the Eagles game this year where Britton Covey was like feeling himself? Yeah, yeah, there? made that catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, oh, and, and, the punt return where in the punt return game, and then, yeah, and then yeah, he, yeah. he went up to go get it, and it was like, all right, Britton, like deep press, relax, pal. That's how I felt when Bryce basically yeah. took Stodd's ball, and, I know. and then still made a play. But yeah, he's been he's been really good over there. And but like, what do you, I, what I do think, you see at the plate? What's going on? Because it is, I mean it's it's so strange because he's had moments where it looks like he's kind of starting to get out of it. The two hits the other, was it last night? You know, the ball that was like 402 or whatever, the out. 
But and then obviously had the one game where he's like was hitless for the season. He's like, screw this. I'm going in and I'm getting some hits and, and had the three homer game. What is it? What are you seeing? I think he's just I, I, I think he's just a bit off. I really do. Like even today, he hit the ball to the wall. That was almost mm-hmm. out. He's hit a couple balls like hard just hard. right at people. Yeah. Same with Trey. That's what I was saying. Yep. And it reminds me a lot of last year. You know, he had the series against the Tigers where he was kind of going through something similar, hit a bunch of balls to the wall. He came into the dugout, was slamming stuff. It was just furious. Yeah. And yeah, he's definitely one of those guys who, like, when he's going bad, he doesn't oh, want to be know, at all. Oh, yeah, you know, buddy. You know. Yeah. 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 He's, uh, it's kind of like me. I, re- I respect it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hey, yes. I'm, you know me. I'm going a, I'm to a wear my uh, emotions on my sleeve guy, too. So. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, if yeah. one of the two of us is throwing their batting helmet, Actually, it's probably both of us. No, yeah. it's me. Yeah, well, well, you 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 would do it, but like you would you would go in the like little dugout or the you know uh, uh, behind the uh, uh, dugout area. I wouldn't like, make a scene. You mean? Yes, I would do it in front of everyone because I wouldn't be able to control myself in the moment. Yeah, I've gotten much better at it. I yeah. like actually playing. I used to be really bad at it, like I'm really bad at it. Yeah. Um, but yes, I've 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 figured it out. So. It remind, like he did the same thing last year, and then again in that Tiger series, and then got right. Back. It's it's so hard for me to really freak yeah, out about. Worried. Price. Yeah, I feel the same way. I I know people will do it because it's like, oh, he's a star player and he's got a good. It's like just it's it's baseball. Deep breaths. Was with, it a mistake with, to put him at first base? Well, and it's like, who's is, is the contract weighing on? It's like, oh my oh, god! Oh yeah, come on, stop. The oh only concern, the only concern is the back. The back. You know, and and to be fair with the like we have not brought that up enough as not an excuse but an explanation we're not an excuse that, podcast like, we've nope. never been an excuse podcast jack is what one of my 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 uh, core beliefs or sayings in life is it's not an excuse it's an explanation i like okay uh, wow but, you know that really does fit you to a t it's pretty it's, good right it's, it's if i could i'm not yeah. again i'm not trying to to prematurely kill you off yeah thank but you. Yeah, you i think never, you never do that so it's good yeah i do think if that should be on your tombstone it's a good one right it's not because like it, the there's station. nothing yeah. there's nothing yeah. that i find funnier than <laughs> obviously i'm listening to the morning show yeah a lot more these days as i've been uh-huh. slowly back on the running grind look at you but yeah dude i can't take the comments anymore i know so you can't all, stop being all, mean to jack they're all dead to me stop but... it's bad. like if you want to be mean about his Phillies opinions fine don't be mean about his weight like what is wrong with you people like who are you like stop <laughs> uh, Jeez, it's, Louise. it's all good but Horrible. i uh, anyway go ahead but like you'll you, you'll like sort of mess something up but then mm-hmm. you you pass the buck, man. Like you will. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Will, well, again, again, yeah. It's, it's never. Like, it's hey. never me. Hey, there's there's a reason I mean, for my. Because it because it rarely it. is. Because it rarely is, Jack. That's the point. So you know. Anyway, no, not an excuse, but perhaps an explanation for Bryce's like struggles. Yes. I like, like he that. didn't have a real spring train and his spring training. Like he was hurt for the last two weeks of spring training. Only got a couple games in right before he came up. So. It's it's not crazy to say that this is kind of a little spring training ish extended in a sense for him potentially you know as a potential explanation. Well, and and I think we should know by now that he's gonna figure it out. Like he's yeah. this the, he's batting. At what point one, has he? Yeah, exactly. He's batting one ninety six right now. He's he's and he's he's just grounding into so many like. Uh, he's the king. You want to? You were talking about double plays before. I mean, geez, he's the king of these right now. He's just ripping the baseball into the ground or just missing home runs. That's yep. like the the current state of Bryce Harper. Mm-hmm. Or Brian Reynolds is like a cat mm-hmm. out there just stealing hits from him. So yeah, or he's like ripping one that the the, the second baseman makes a diving catch on or whatever. Yeah, exactly. yeah. No, and, and they. I think as soon as it's almost like, uh it's sort of Rollins like in a way. Where as soon as he gets going, I feel like everything starts picking back up. Everyone's like, okay, we got our guy back. Like, let's go on a run. And when he's batting third and he's just just not producing at the current time, I think it, it does it does suck a lot out of him. And it's and it's and it's very, very annoying. But the good part is is that the guys in front of him are heating up in Shorber and Turner. And the the honestly, the biggest sticking point for me with the offense 
is still who bats four. I just yeah, because JT's been really good, but but he should be your six hitter or five at best. You know, like they just don't have that that guy. I mean, that's why the Castellanos. I mean, when Dave was building the team, if he, it was like, all right, if you could predict how this all plays out, like he was like. Most likely, Nick Castellanos is my four hitter behind Bryce Harper because he's a perfect guy to protect him because he goes up and he's bat he batted 309 with 34 home runs last year. Doesn't that sound like someone you want behind Harper? You know what I mean? And and that that's where the the Castellanos struggles and and Bohm's inability to you know really add power to his repertoire outside of flashes here and there. You know the, that's that's where it's killing him. You know, it's not JT's fault. JT's actually been really good yeah. for a catcher. He's great. But, you know, th- there aren't many teams that have catchers as their cleanup hitter, like the Dodgers. And that's a weird, you know, they also have <laughs> yeah, Otani well, batting. They have Otani batting, too. They have Otani yeah. batting, too. And also their catcher's Will Smith, who, you know, is probably the best hitting catcher in the game. So, like, I, I you know, it, it, I'm with you. I, I think that is absolutely, when you look at the uh, long term over the course of the season, line of construction-wise, that's the, the issue. Because, like, JT again, like you just said, good hitter should not be batting fourth. But like, it's the it's the Castellanos thing where he was a three hundred hitter last year in the four hole. Do you just put him back there and, and see what happens? Hey. I mean, he he did say heading into the at bat in the ninth yesterday that it was the first bat all year where he didn't think about anything. Yeah. So hey, we've known he said it with the outfield too. You know, he's like I just got you know some really just. <laughs> Not thinking about stuff out there. He does seem like one of those just clear your mind and do it kind of guys. Oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a he's that's a stone cast. The honest yeah. thing with Bohm. At some point, you worry too much about defense. You know, like I, I appreciate getting better yeah. defensively. Yeah, I mean, but, hey. <laughs> I mean, I spend a little more time up. with Kevin Long than Bobby Dickerson is what you're saying. Yeah, uh, enough of the defense, defense, me fence, whatever. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, and he has become very, I mean, the error, you know, notwithstanding, notwithstanding. he's very good out there, like great out there. But yeah, I just, I'm it, with he, you, man. He, you got to hit more, especially they need this team needs, needs him to hit more. He has to be better about driving the baseball. And mm-hmm. it's just, he's, he's just too, there's too much there. Like size wise, swing wise, he's a, it's it's he's huge. The, the bone conversation is so frustrating because like he's good. It's not that he's bad. No, it's just no. It's just how he's a valuable good is major he? league baseball player, no matter how, what. Like how, already, how good is he? That's my issue. And I thought the other day he was hitting the ball to right field. He was he was just thinking opposite field. Well, and that homer to, that he hit was up, you know, like right center to into that bo- in the bullpen there. Yeah, right. And that was right after he was like really cons- con- being a concerted effort to to drive the ball the opposite way. Maybe the pitchers made the the adjustment to that, and we're like, okay, well, we're just gonna jam you in with these two seamers. And he's like, oh, sweet, awesome. Let me just rip it into the ground to the, to the shortstop. <laughs> it's just and, and start too. I mean, it's like it's tough because. I don't really – I just have faith that these a lot of these guys are going to figure it out. You know what I mean? Like, I think Stott's Back a good hitter. Back in the baseball card thing. I think Baum's a good hitter. I think JT's a good hitter. I think Bryce is a great hitter. I think Turner – maybe this is a Turner we get all year, which would be awesome. It's a lot I mean, of infield he's, hits. He, yeah, but he's been their best hitter. He, Trey Turner, to this point in the season, take it all into account, has been their best hitter. I mean, him or Marsh. Probably Marsh, just because of the home runs. Yeah, but, my, know. I thought of Marsh second, but but Turner's yes. been Turner's certainly been their best hitter the last you know the four week. or five games. Yeah, the last week he's been good. He was kind of brutal before that, but it's he okay. was he was. But look, yeah, I'll, I didn't look, but I bet he's over three hundred now. He is over. He's, I think yeah. he's three hundred seven. Yeah, I knew it was in the two nineties. So I was like, with today, he definitely went over at some point. So yeah, and again and again, like even that the outs have been you know hard hit. It seems like he's really. You know, got a good feel for for the zone and coverage and all that. Like he's been great, uh, you know. But yeah. and look, he hasn't had a horrendous defensive moment for for like three four days or whatever. Well, so that's when you're when you're hitting better. All of a sudden, the yeah, defense is playing better. It's true. It's true. Where if we could translate that to the entire team, I think we'd be in pretty good shape. Totally. Um, all right, uh, we're gonna get to the take bag in a sec. One one guy we didn't mention. I'll let you cover other stuff, but uh, just uh, nice to have a Ryan Kirkring back, huh? What a thought. Like, yeah. And I, you know, honestly, I, look, uh, I'm surprised Pinto over Nick Nelson 
I, I, maybe it's yeah. an options thing. I don't know, but I, I think Nick Nelson probably a better pitcher than Pinto, but obviously it's a mop up role anyway. <laughs> But when you think if you're about, going to either, something's gone wrong. Exactly. But I mean, you, you, I mean, but I thought I actually thought Nelson's looked pretty good when he's been in there so far in the you know couple times we saw him. But um, I, uh, I mean, this this bullpen when you had Kirkring in, I mean, it's it's pretty. Uh, you know, I, I know the everyone clowned on the uh, the the tweet when it came out. MLB.com. Yeah, right when yeah. when the first two games they were disaster, but really ever since then, I mean. They've they've lived up to it. It's been it's been a lights out bullpen since then. Yeah, yeah, and you know the, a couple that was also Brogdon. You know Brogdon wasn't yeah. exactly. So Anthony is best. the one we're a little. Yeah, little yeah. I think people are. I, I mean, I know his ERA is the seventh, which isn't great, but I thought today not it just, home he, run. He, it's thing. the last two outings. I didn't think he was horrible. It's just he gave up a solo shot in each of them, and it's like yeah. you just can't kind of like really give you a a a, a full a full out. He's sort of the Nola of relief pitchers, where yeah, it's like, such a good, yes, I love. Where that. he's like, ah, hey, he's pretty good. He's good, yeah. and then, and yeah. then, here's the home run out of nowhere. Yeah. Because like he was flashing 99 today. I thought he had pretty good command of his stuff. It's just like it's him and uh, him and Marte have that slider that backs up sometimes, and hey. and I just like I wish he had a different pitch besides that slider because it feels like it it backs up more often than it should for for. The stuff that he has. So, yeah, I mean, on paper, the bullpen's really good. So, and then the nice part about Kirkring coming back is that if, if Sir Anthony does struggle, you can kind of reverse roles there. Marte, who right. knows what you have at this point? I mean, point. I already have in my head for what it's worth. Like, my trust level for righties in the pen goes Hoffman, Kirkring, Sir Anthony, personally. Yeah, I still I still want Kirk Ring to throw more fastballs. I, I I it was a little bit of a flat ninety eight today. Like I would I want to I know he's been throwing more of that two seam sinker kind of fastball that that he needs, frankly, because the fact that he, he doesn't throw ninety eight as you know, more often than not kind of suggests to me that they think his fastball doesn't grade out very well. So I hope that he starts flashing more of that two seamer to get guys off of his four seamer and become kind of a three pitch guy. But either way, I mean, the sweeper, like, he made he made JT and Reynolds look stupid on the same pitch. Like, that's how yeah. nasty it was. Like, JT almost missed it. <laughs> and he knows he knows what pitch is coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless it was Friday night where he did not yeah, know. Yeah, where he clearly had miscommunication. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, on paper, it's so funny because you, you think about the OA bullpen, and it's like, JC, stud. Matt Madsen, stud. Scott Air acquired, stud. Lidge, obviously. And then, like, the other options were who? Like, Clay Condry. I know. <laughs> like, all these random guys. But the bullpen was, like, one of the biggest strengths of that team. And, like, this bullpen on paper is obviously better. I mean, I know they don't have a 48 for 48 guy closing him out. But I don't – and this could 100% come back to haunt me and bite me. Great. I, I just don't – I don't disagree with the whole – matchups dependent closer thing like i think hoffman can do it but i think if alvarado can get important outs in the eighth then i'll leave hoffman for the ninth at worst case scenario is that both of them can do it and i guess if it comes down to the who do you rather do it it's probably alvarado but it seems like they like the matchup thing i don't hate i really don't i thought i would hate it more i in a perfect world yeah give me a traditional closer but i just it's, it's I don't, I don't of, hate it's it either. Working. It's working. It's fine. For me. It's fine. I trust. The point is, is like they happen to have two guys that I trust in that situation. So like, I don't really care because I trust the person coming in. It's just we know that when we've tried, at least the Phillies have tried to do this <laughs> over the years, it never works, and thus we have this kind of feel towards it. But look, they they've never had a pen like this. So, uh, all right, let's take back it. All right, let's do it. So, uh, let's just do some of the pitchers, pitching stuff. Uh, yeah. Ranger was great. I mean, ah, buddy, the Ranger kind of breakout or, or Ranger arriving season, I think, is definitely here. Commands there. He's he's kind of taking what he did in the postseason and now translating it to regular season stuff. I mean, he's cool, calm, collected. We know that, but it feels like that curveball has become more of a weapon for him. And it's really the fastball command. I mean, he was 94 the other night in in and in and out all night long. I just I think I think 
the Ranger breakout feels like it's here. And it's phenomenal to see. Sanchez was fine. You know, the, the two errors were annoying. But uh, Ranger's just a stud, man. And I, I'm curious to see what they do contract-wise with them. Yeah, and, and it passes eye test. You know, it's like before, like, especially like 2022, and then last year it started to turn more. But when you watch Rain, Ranger, you know, you'd be like, he's good. But, like, you would kind of – and you'd see that, the you know, the, the velocity was good, whatever. But, like – you just kind of like, wow, how's he getting these outs? And it just felt like because he was so calm that it just worked. But like now, like he's gotten to the point where you, where his stuff looks nasty when you watch. You know, he is it, it, he looks noticeably better than he did a couple years ago. Even. You know what I mean? Well, all this stuff kind of jumps at you. Yeah, like, that's what I mean. Like, there's so much more life to his stuff. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Well, and I think that's why. You don't really see Ranger on on pitcher pitching ninja, or you don't see him on these websites of oh look how good Ranger Suarez is because he's kind of an old school mm-hmm. two thousand uh, from my lifetime two thousand or two thousand nine kind of pitcher where it just gets the ball goes does his thing and it's not spectacular stuff but it's like it's- Glav- he's like Glavin esque. Like Tom, right. you know that kind of guy, you know, where it's he's not going to overpower you, but he goes out and he's just smart, and his stuff is is very good, but not you know overpowering. But he's so smart, and he changes speeds, and he you know can paint and and all that. Yeah, he's and he and again, like we talk about it mattering in the playoffs, but you know having the slow heartbeat thing matters always in any situation. It can't hurt to just be a little bit calmer, a little bit less rattled in, in all kinds of situations throughout a season. Like you watch Ranger and you see winning vibes and like, yep. you know, He's a winner. You, you, met, you mentioned Glavin and stuff like that. It's so different than watching like Falter who they should have smoked or Marco Gonzalez who they should have smoked. This dude, like, the soft tossing lefties. Like oh, what is it? Them. What they is can't it? They can't hit them. It, like, it doesn't matter who's on the team. Like, it, it it could be anyone on the Phillies, and they'll just all of a sudden you can't hit them. Well, it's not even it's not even this team. I mean, I used to talk about Jaime Garcia it used to eat. The, yeah, that's the, my point. The I'm saying still every Phillies team ever it feels like slow starts and soft tossing lefties. That's that's the 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 mo the Phillies way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's great. It's just it's it's infuriating that's when they the get word. shut down by those guys. Infuriating, yeah. especially Falter. You know, mm-hmm. like well, obviously, yes, yes, for sure. Can't get shelled by Falter. No, no, you definitely can't. You can't get shelled by Falter. So, uh, and then Turnbull, it's me. One of those days where he just didn't have his command at all. Like he, you know, <laughs> like he couldn't. I did. I will say, I did have a buddy uh, say, uh, "Has Jack, you know, has Jack commented on the the Turnbull start yet?" So I think people were waiting to hear how you're feeling. Huh? And you know, he's fine. Okay. He's nothing. Fine. Nothing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he's, he, he just didn't have his command. He didn't yeah, have his command. I'm, with, I'm with you. I mean, I'm with you. And there are a couple one, little things that, that didn't go his way, and, and then it kind of, you know, I'm with you. Well, he's never going to be efficient. I mean, mm-hmm. Spencer Turnbull is not an efficient starter. He is a – He's a 3-2 count on most guys kind of. So he's like – yeah, exactly. Well, he's, he's, he's a 5-6 inning pitcher. And, yeah. You know, that kind of – that's kind of what he is. So I – yeah, it, was a, it wasn't a great start. It wasn't a terrifying start. Everything's fine. Uh, Schwarber is batting what four, seven, four, four oh seven, I believe against dude, lefties. He, dude, and it, it's like it's he has so been, funny. And, he, and he's like uh, really struggled against righties. It's really strange. Uh, it's there's I I don't want to say like it's such a strange phenomena, you know? It's baseball. I mean, it's baseball. It's, it's baseball. Most... So I texted you. I texted you baseball with an exclamation point when we were talking about it. It's it's it makes no sense. I mean, yeah, it just it makes doesn't. no sense. Like he's yeah. figured out lefties can't figure out righties. Is off to yep. a pretty hot start, hitting a lot of yep. singles. Yep. Yep. On base sure. five times in a game on Saturday. Yep. Yep. Sure. <laughs> sure. Makes sense. They are undefeated with the C lineup this year. Should they? Should they do that every day? Dude. It- we all know it at this point. Like, oh, who was I talking? I was talking to someone about the lineup, and I was like, you know, and I think you say it all the time. It's like, yeah, well, you know, with the lineup like this, I feel like they always win. Like every time they roll out the bottom of the order, when you got like Pache, Dude, it was, Rojas, it was, Sosa, it was, was like Sosa, Stubbs, yeah, Sosa, Sosa, yeah. Sosa Pache, just kicks Rojas. hitter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what it was. I was talking. It was I was doing leading off yesterday. That's what it is because it was after Go Birds, and I was doing leading off. 
And I said, I, I did the, the starting lineup and I was like, you know, I was like, get ready for this. I was like, it's like, first of all, Casty at five. Honestly, we should probably include that. It's like Casty. So, so, you know, as far as it goes. And I was like, but you know what? They, they just always seem to win when they, they roll out these guys. So probably win today. It's so funny. C lineup more often. Put the yeah. C lineup out there more mm-hmm. often. That mm-hmm. seems like a, the, the recipe for success. Yeah. But no one believes that's when the Phillies are at their best. Um, but, but Marte and Strom continue to look really good. Like, Strom, mm-hmm. I mean, yesterday comes in, strikes out. <laughs> I mean, he goes two innings, which I'm usually am not a huge fan of. Mm-hmm. But just comes in, does his thing. And, and Marte just, I, I, I don't know great. what. I, 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 again, trying not to get ahead of myself. Because, you know, I want to get ahead of myself. But it's stupid. He looks, he yeah. looks, he looks really good. Right you're a year now. early. You're a year early. So they always say he was good. You bet. Oh, be I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, go do it. Better to do be it. a year early than a year late. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's the key. That is the key. <laughs> you know what term I don't get? I can't wait for this. And they mentioned on the broadcast today. Uh huh. Like, what the hell is a high sky? It's the sky. Oh. I so. I don't know this either. I'm with you, buddy. Like maybe I know, like no like clouds, maybe or something. So there's like you could see up. I mean, I don't know. Sure, but they're what all high skies. I like honestly it. don't know that I've heard this phrase very. Really? Often. Oh, dude. It's yeah, such a, it's such a baseball term. It's like, yeah, it's a high, high sky today. Sky. Really? You know, it can't get any yeah. higher. You know, yeah. it, it just kind of keeps going. So it's, it's the same, same as it was yesterday. Same sky. Yeah, and probably, then the other day, and the other it, day. It probably has to do with like there's no cloud visibility. Covers. Yeah, it definitely has to be nothing else. But it's ridiculous. You know, yeah, they always talk about it. maybe because you don't watch spring training games like I do. Mm-hmm. Like they mm-hmm. always talk about how high the sky is, mm-hmm. and it's like, well, it can't get any higher. I think it's this is just, a great. I'm very normally I'm I'm so ready to jump on you in these. You know what term I don't get? You know, and I'm like, and then you say something, and I'm like, oh god, Jack, really? Yeah. In this case fully support this no idea like why why do you say if there's way yeah how about how about wow pretty sky today not a cloud or how about just not a cloud in the sky today you can see for a mile like whatever like it's I, a high it's sky just, high sky it's a high sky <laughs> it's just, I, I, it does not compete with me I'm it doesn't you. compete with me at all i don't i didn't really do, uh disagree with whit merrifield not going home on Saturday, like it was no outs. Do I really want him? Oh, I was fine with it too. There's a lot of harsh reaction to it. Now, Whit Merrifield's been incredibly disappointing. He's to been this. horrible. So much, so much weak contact. I, I just didn't. I, I, I'm not killing him for that situation. You know, it like I think it was because he was pinch running for Schwarber. People were like, it's like expect more out of that. I, I was with you. I think he would have been out if he ran. It could have been out. Also, it's just dumb. Like, just could have could have been out. You it's know? zero. It's, it's no outs. Why would I? Why would I send him home at that point for for a possible bang bang play? If you can't hit a ball to the outfield at that point and do a job, then that's that's on you more than uh, Merrifield. The Wheeler splitter was gross today until it wasn't. Oh, it was nasty though. Yeah, until it wasn't. But it was man. Couple like the back to back strikeouts to end the fifth. Uh, I, I think or the yeah I think he struck out the side. So when he struck out the side, yeah, like, but those last two, especially on the splitter, like, that was, I mean, he just looked so nasty to start the season. I mean, the fact that they're zero and four in his four starts is mind numbing. Like, it's and hard to, yeah, it's hard to, it, yeah, exactly. It's just hard to process with how good he's looked. Ten strikeouts in five, essentially. Yeah. Chipotle's chicken out past door. Nice. Uh, the next six, the next six should be at least five and one, no doubt about it. The, they're mm-hmm. two of the worst teams in baseball. Rockies. Wait, so it's Rockies, then who? White Sox. White. Oh yeah, I knew the White Sox were coming out, but I didn't think it was that great. You have to, guys, guys. This is uh, even Jack, who was like predicted the split against the Pirates, asked for it. Yeah, like Thanks for it. Win some freaking games this week, please. You know? It's time. Yeah. Now to the the final portion. I would take back. Ooh, you, this feels very solemn or, uh, you know, whatever. Well, I, got, I got two things to get to. I can't wait. I know that I host a Sixers podcast. Oh, yeah, you do. It's true. Listen to Clap Your Hands for, like, if you want in-depth. Check it out. Oh, yeah. Breaking down 
you know, zone defense. And... Well, you know how much time Jack has to work on the Sixers with how much time he puts into the Phillies. It's the same thing. He works just right. as much on the Sixers stuff. I wish the High Hopes people and you could have seen me at our event on Friday night. <laughs> just like and there's every single TV was Sixers magic. And it, I was sitting in the corner <laughs> by myself, fur- like furious at the Phillies. So and- I can confirm Elliot Shore Parks when, when we did go birds yesterday uh, without even you told me this on your own. He told me it on his own without even knowing. He's like, dude, Jack, he's like, this is what he did. I was like, I heard. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. It was one of the again, it was one of those moments where I was like, I know this. This makes me look like a loser. Like I, I know, I, like I know, this is this is not the best look for me. Yeah, couldn't help it. Like it's just, I idea. just, I, I couldn't help it. It's you because you're 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 uh, uh, unambiguously authentic. Relentlessly you're just, you're myself. Gonna be a, that's right. Yes. Relentlessly authentic. That's even better. I like relentlessly that. Good, yes. myself. Yes. Yes. So while it was a great time, good food, good beer, all that stuff. I just, I couldn't handle, like, I, I, like, the Sixers are doing something over here, and I'm just glaring at the City Connects as they are getting shut down by Bailey freaking Falter. So, uh, just, just, just for people wondering if I've changed, I don't think anything has has really changed at all. (laughs) Nope, 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 nope. Uh, all right. Uh, I have one, one more thing, by the way. I have one more. Okay, thing. good. So do I. I'll do mine very quickly, uh, just okay. because you know it is Master Sunday, and I would like to give a shout out to Jim Nance. That's all. That's it. It's good. Yeah. Oh wait, hold shout, on. Shout out to Jim. It was did, weird. He did resign from the tournament, which was weird. I, I and Eagle, I thought did a great job, but it was weird watching the tournament without without Nancy. No, nah, I'm a, I'm anti I and Eagle. Oh, it's tough. I mean, I need to start in radio like us. He's a, a WFAN update guy who, who worked his way up and called games and made his right. way my, to the chat at the iron. Shout out respect. My, my, issue, <laughs> my issue goes back to, you know, as a fellow grinder, I appreciate the effort and the work, pal. Great job. Here, Here's my issue. Your name's Ian, man. I've I never know. heard I the name. Okay, so I don't disagree with this. Go ahead. <laughs> There's no I. Yeah, I, won't, I, won't stop, I won't stop you on this. Your name's Ian. All right, yeah, get it's over Ian. it. Now at the same it's time, Ian. Ian Eagle has no, no, no flash. It's tough. It's tough. Whereas Ian Eagle, as annoying as Ian is, it does work. Oh, it pops. Yeah, yeah. it pops. It pops. Ian and Eagle bird, pops. good nickname. So yeah. you know, and he, he I still can't Raf- believe he does. He let Raftery I, cook. I, I thought that was good. You know? I can't believe he still does Nets games, dude. Like give He's it up. He's all over the place. Like these guys, some of these guys, like I've, you know, I think I work hard, and then I look at Ian Eagle, I'm like, wow, you work hard. All right, dude, um, let, hold on, hold on. Final thought yeah. on that. Yeah, there is an opening now because Vern is retiring. I know. I let T Mac call the Masters, man. Dude, I, ah, I mean, I like get this. him, I like get it. our guy. I mean, T Mac's good at everything he does. Like him, him calling the tournament games, he's phenomenal. Like he calls a great basketball game. You know, he's good here's at my football. Issue. Like. I, I, and here's my issue. I hope Pat McCarthy is still listening for this for this conversation because he should you mean be, even the traitor, Pat even though he's a traitor. Make sure yes. we get it right. Yes. Here's my big question about T Mac. Is he allowed to listen? I thought we banned him from listening. All right. Well, if, maybe someone will tell him. Go ahead. Here's my big big question about T Mac. Does he have the golf voice? Because there's a difference. Like yeah, well, T Mac loves to rev it up, and and it's part of what makes him great is he can live up to a big moment and really. Because, you know, there's nothing worse than there's a big moment. And it's like, and they win. And it's like, you know, unless well, it's like, on, all right, on, if you want to let the crowd tell the story. That's your goat, Pat Summerall. the crowd tell the story. I don't think Pat Summerall. Pat Summerall's not my goat. I just knew who he was. Um, There's a difference between you and me. Uh, <laughs> but I, uh, I T-Mac, T-Mac nails the big moments. And that that's huge. So I'm with you, though. Can, can T-Mac do and we're looking at down. You are looking down live the at the sixteenth yeah. green. We're looking at the sixteenth green. Walker Fritz is walking. Tiger, so, yeah. Walker Fritz strolls down the green as he gets ready. I don't know. I don't know if T-Max can... He has a he has a two shot lead as he heads in to the final back but stretch also, here. Also, imagine that guy sinks a pot and it's like it's like and he's won the Masters. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's still Nance's call. Learn. I, you're right. Well, I'm, I'm looking at. I'm trying to get T Mag multiple promotions, not just one here. All right. 
No, mm-hmm. but it shows you're a frog golf golf fan. Oh, Andy I Bird. I do not pretend to be a golf fan. Am I? I yeah. Uh, I pretend nothing. I enjoy golf. Sure, I'm not a golf fan, like a aggressive fan. Anyway, uh, I just want to give a shout out to Jim Nance. He's yeah, one of the patron good. saints of this podcast. So shout out to Jim. Friday we talked to Randy Wolf. Oh, look that at was, you! What a, what a flex by you. That was well, great. it was just like it was kind of funny thinking about like. I was five when he did. Wow. That's and great. I remember like Wolfpack. Was really, like really the... good. Thank you for this. This is dude. dude my, dude. I'm just telling you, I'm just letting you know. I'm letting you know, buddy. My, my first mem- memory of the Phillies, the, like my, my pitchers were Omar Dahl, Robert mm. Persson, Vicente <laughs> Padilla, oh. and, and Randy. Oh. Oh. And Nelson Figueroa, yeah. I believe, was a, in there too. What a crew, buddy. What a crew. Oh, and great. Brandon Duckworth. I, yeah, Duck. I remember that. That's great. That's <laughs> that's for tough my stuff. goats. Uh, we all have our. We all have our. You know, it's just unbelievable yeah. how how bad the Phillies have been for as long. We're in a golden age right now. This is great. Oh man, when I think of golden age, I think of this. Yes, honestly, it's actually I mean, you know it's it, so honestly funny. it's one of the three best eras of Phillies baseball yeah. like already ever. You know? so, yeah, I know. Yeah. The yeah. franchise is uh, like 150 yeah. years old, uh, and, and this is one of the three best ever yeah. of all time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What a run. What a run. They are 27th in barrels, by the way. The Phillies are. Guys, come on. Where's Phil Gosselin when you need him? Like, what are we doing here? 27th in barrels. And that was before the game today. And I'm sure nothing really changed. So, so that's awesome. It's great. It's great. (laughs) Hit the baseball. Thank you. Hit, Hit the, the baseball. baseball. Hit, you got some. You got some bad teams with some bad pitchers coming in. Everyone has been hitting Rockies pitching. Do it, all right? Like yeah. everyone's been hitting White Sox pitching. Do it, okay? Yeah. Please. Well, the White Sox have what? Three Except wins for Garrett Crochet. Garrett Crochet seems like he's. Oh yeah, yeah. Garrett might be back. And my li- my literal boy Eric Fetty. Yeah. Oh, uh, you. That was a good call by you. He's looked good. Yeah, you know, or, yeah. Or, or, I, I feel like my first least. list. I feel like my first list has been very. I think you've been miss. very good. Yeah, it, hit or miss, but like it started like like Bailey Ober started bad, been really good since. So you know we're getting there. I, I got well, faith. Joe, you. I always Joe Ryan him. was my real H- Hunter Hunter, Br- Hunter Brown was good. Was good. You know that was a, a late addition to the first list because okay. I thought I he's pretty good that. last year. Next time, next and time, I, I'm disappointed in DL Hall, but that's for another. Yeah, time. me too. Me too. He's he's this year's Aaron Ashby. It's a shame. Yeah, well, I keep putting my stock the in brewers there. lefties. One of them is going to come through. Uh, uh, all right. So, final yes. thing here from yes. from my take back as we mm-hmm, work through this mm-hmm. thing. Oh, wait, we're still on tonic. Got it. Yes, that was not my final point. This is my I final thought. Point. I assumed it was okay because it's the first thing I had written down to talk about on this podcast. <laughs> Outstanding. That's a, it's called burying the lead right there. Yes. <laughs> George Glasson is. Oh yeah, I, I saw your tweet. I forgot. Like, I forgot. <laughs> like I just, it's oh something like that's great. I knew. I, have, I totally forgot about this. I'm, I totally forgot. Go ahead. When you have the ability to find and develop and talk about the next Garrett Richards, I don't know how there's not. I don't know how people aren't. It's the loftiest like, you can go. The next Garrett Richards, you can't yes. like dream a little bigger than uh-uh. the next Garrett Richards. He is just like Jared, uh, uh, Garrett Richards. <laughs> He's just like him. And it's the same exact thing. So I just, um, yeah, I, I. He's got seventeen right. strikeouts and two starts. Mm-hmm. He is curveball. How old? How table. old is he? Probably twenty two, twenty three. He went to Minnesota. Um, and and he's in in. High A now. Well, I got drafted this year, so yeah, yeah. So I'm just wondering what what level he's at. If he was, I mean, at- the Braves, the Braves took you know Hurston Waldrop in the first round. Well, the Phillies took Hurston Waldrop in the sixth Look round. At so you. who is better? Dude, shout out I'm to just- friends of the pod. I'm just our guys, press and Mattingly. You know, Brian Barber just crushing it down there. Not Bill Barber. That's good. Not good work by Bill you. Barber. I one time I got excited. All right. Dude, we done I, here. Are we done I'm, here? I, well, deep breaths. I'm getting there. Uh, let me work through this. Yes. Because I've watched a sickening amount yes. of Clearwater Threshers I'm games. I'm really this week. excited for you. This is great. Dude, the, I'm just saying, <laughs> the ball flies off TJ Walton's bat. I'm, it's it 
goes, man. So I have so many. They have so much talent that is starting to work their way. Good. The That's what I want. I'm I'm looking at like all these Orioles guys, like uh, oh, it's sick, Krauser, it's sick. and they, it's like every dude. It's like unbelievable. They just have a, like I love. Well, like, they haven't called up Pest and Curse that. Yeah, I know. Just uh, like rake, 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 rake. Like it, they're just so. I'm ready for some guys who rake to come up. Yeah, Aiden. Aiden. <laughs> they might not have anywhere to go, but yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, yeah, that's the other point. All right, um, all right. Again, shout out to Miller Lite. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by Miller Lite, official sponsor of the Philadelphia Phillies. Tastes like Miller time, Philadelphia. Celebrate responsibly. Uh, I am assuming we'll be back on Thursday because it's an off day. I will tell you now: if they lose the series to the Rockies, Mm-mm. we might not probably Mm-mm. won't be back on thursday but assuming they win the series assuming they don't you know lose on wednesday in heartbreaking fashion we'll talk to you guys on thursday um and uh that's all i got you know can, can freaking win a series win some games sweet now you t- ripped me last time for asking for a sweep can we get a sweep of the rockies is that too much to ask i'm gonna sweep the week just sweep the week how about that D- thank you yes <laughs> sweep the week that's the official high hopes podcast position this week all right sweep the week He's Fritz himself. We'll talk to you guys later.